Welcome to this week's episode of The Higher Self as we take a little bit of a different twist on the on the podcast. Normally, I'm the one doing the interviews, and this week, I'm getting interviewed. And my friend David Sutcliffe invited me over to a local wellness place called Kuya here in Austin. And what transpired was something that I was not expecting. I actually was taken into a moment of realization about my life and about, you know, part of uh, my shadow, quite frankly. Uh, it ended up shocking me. And I think it's going to be awesome for you to not only learn a little bit more about my life and my story, my healing journey, my awakening journey, but also to see how, you know, even after so much healing, uh, there, there's more, there's more that needs to be unraveled. Continue the conversation at dannymorell.com backslash awaken you. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for coming. I'm David Sutcliffe. For those who don't know, I'm a, a former actor and now I'm a core energetics practitioner, which is a, a, a somatic psychotherapy. And I'm here with, I want to call you Dr. Danny Morell. You're not a doctor, but you, no. you, you have that aura. <laughs> Danny Morell. What, how do you describe yourself? Me. <laughs> you. I'm yeah. just me. Yeah. What, but what do you, do you think about yourself? Cause you have, um, awakened your higher self. Yeah. Is your, your, your brand. That's the, that's the event. Yeah. And, uh, how, how do you, are you a motivational, are you a healer? What, how do you think of yourself? I know this is going to sound terrible, but as me. Yeah. Yeah. Because I feel like when we get caught up in, in, in titles and in, um, names, it's like another way in which the ego tries to separate us from everybody else, mm -hmm. you know? And I, I literally think as me trying to show everyone how to get back to them. Like, mm. That's it. But it's just your wisdom is coming out of you all the time. I and mean, I found you on Instagram and I was like, who is this guy? You just say it all so perfectly like this. Um, things that i think a lot of us think about it we've heard before but there's a way that you articulate them so clearly and so simply so that they can be heard it feels like you have a real a real gift for that when when did this start when did you become aware that you had well i don't know some kind of spiritual wisdom i i, I think i've always had a knack for communicating mm -hmm. and i and, and you it, you can kind of like look back on the journey and tell that at some point in time you were going to get here type of deal. And I, and I feel like everybody can kind of like look back and all of the, the trials and tribulations leads you to where you are type of deal. You know, I can remember I was running my first real estate office and I, we had a little team of like seven people and I made them all just like sit in their chairs and listen to me talk. <laughs> and then I was like, how do I do, you know? But, but back then it was literally all about, you know, my need for approval, uh, my need for attention, my need for validation. I wasn't aware of it back then, but that's what I was trying to do. And so I, I, I built this event called Relentless because I was, you know, relentless. I was, I was in that, that grind energy and, um, and I wanted to show everyone how to be relentless, you know, and um, again, as a result of that, that that need for validation and approval, we would bring celebrities to the event, um, so I could feel good that I had the biggest celebrity at, at at my event. You know, again, I wasn't aware of it back then, but everything changed. My my last guest at the last Relentless was Kobe, right right before he passed away. Wow, it was literally six months before he passed away, and there was something about him because the 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 year before we had a Rod, Alex, the baseball player. And, you know, A-Rod is wonderful at everything, but he was a little, he was rough, you know, he was very, I'm a celebrity. Mm -hmm. So in my mind, I thought like, you know, Kobe's going to be probably 10 times worse because Kobe's the man, right? And I was really excited about it. And, and when I met him, I'll never forget this. We, we walk into this room and he, um, these doors open and it's like the silhouette, like of light. And you see him walk in. And I'm there, my brother's there, my, my, my little son is there. And he just walks in and he goes, what's up, man? I'm Kobe. 
I was like, oh, this dude is cool. It was, right. it was just really nice, you know. And I just loved his humility. Well, when he passed away, COVID hit, and that's when I started my my spiritual journey. And I just thought to myself, like, when you really understand life and you really understand you and the present of the now, there is nothing to be relentless about. So mm -hmm. one of my values is being authentic. I no longer felt authentic trying to tell or help people be something that I now knew you didn't need to be. Mm -hmm. And so that's when we turned it to Awaken. And my first thought, yeah, I'm a little crazy. The first time I did ayahuasca, I thought everyone has to do this. Like, <laughs> like the whole planet has to do this, right? And then, and, and my, I'm rambling now, but my, my root chakra hadn't opened yet. So I was like, a, I was off the wall. And I, when I mean, I would go on Facebook lives. I would tell everybody, you got to do this. You, and people thought I was nuts, you know? And, this is uh, this is all before you conceived awaken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah this, this is, is all you're still in real estate. Still, yeah, still in real estate. The king and, of Rancho Cucamonga, Southern California. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, and and so yeah, and so I started thinking like, everyone that I would tell, I naturally am very trusting. I trust myself. I trust other people. Where's that? Why, why do you trust yourself so much? Because that, that feels true. Where did that come from? Or where does that come from? Because if you're going to trust anyone, you got to learn to first trust yourself. But a lot of people don't trust themselves. I know. And I, I know for me, like, I don't, I don't, it's not that I don't always trust myself, but I don't always listen to that intuition. I mean, this is it just happened to me this past weekend where my cameras, you know, got stolen. Yeah. And I had this, uh, it, it 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 hit me in the stomach. It was like a punch in the stomach because like weeks leading up, I had this intuition that something was going to happen. Mm -hmm. And so when I got the news, it wasn't so much the loss of the gear. It was that I didn't listen to my intuition. Like it was, sure. it was painful sure. that I didn't, didn't trust myself. Sure. But it, it does seem like you have, um, you have deep faith in, in yourself and your intuition. hundred percent. Have you always been like that? No, I, I think it's like a muscle mm. that you gotta, you just gotta learn to build and you start with little baby steps, you know? Um, you think about things a lot or you just like have an idea and then take action? I, I don't, I don't really think or process or plan anything. Wow. No, nothing that I have done in life. I just wake up with an idea and I go. When did that start? When I was 18. So, so we were living in a, a two bedroom apartment. My mom was a single mom. Um, we were, I don't know if we were on welfare or, or just, just, had gotten off, but you know, there was no money. And I just remember laying in bed thinking, I got to buy us a house because my dad's not around. Like no one's like, if I don't do something, we're going to live the rest of our lives like this. And I had decided that I didn't want to live the rest of my life. So I remember in wrestling. I had put up like a goal and it was to win like 30 matches and qualify for the CIF tournament or whatever. And sure enough, like I won the matches and I qualified. So I thought to myself, what if I applied, you know, that same principle to buy my mama house? Mm -hmm. And then my ego kicked in and my ego says, you know, but nobody in your family owns a house. As a matter of fact, there was one aunt that owns a house and she's the evil one because she has money. Right. <laughs> so, you know, everybody else made her out to be the bad one. Right. And I thought, but like, I want a house. Like, we deserve a house. I, I don't want to live in this neighborhood like this anymore. And um, so I said, okay, I'm going to buy my mom a house by the time I'm 21 years old. And I'm going to do it. And I don't know how I'm going to do it. I'm just going to, it's going to happen. And sure enough, next thing you know, I bumped into a real estate agent. By the time I'm 21, I bought her a house. And so you just start, like, taking action like that, that today, like, true story. And Casper is here and my team. I drive them crazy. But we'll have Awaken. There'll be 800 or 900 people in the audience. And I don't prepare not even a second. I, I show up 20 minutes before. They give me the mic. I walk on. I go, all right, you guys ready? And we just start. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. You just hone that muscle. It, it, it's a muscle that you've practiced that. I yeah. mean, you're talking about being in the real estate office and, and you're sitting in front of your uh, seven people and yeah. you're talking. You're yeah. practicing. Yeah. And I guess at some point you must've got feedback like, Hey, you're good at this. Cause we were talking about 
my interview with Andrew Tate and I was saying like sitting across from him and listening to him speak and how articulate he, he is and the way the ideas come and you were like, kind of like, ah, I could go head to head with him. <laughs> like, you know, like you, there's some way that, you know, like you have that skill, sure, like it's sure. a real skill that you have. Yeah. When did you realize that you had that? Because I think, I think it's, it, it may be, I don't, I mean, there's a lot of skills that are important, but communicating ideas in, in the world we live in right now seems uh, very important. You know, and, and I appreciate that, but, but the truth is, is that we all are wonderful at something. We all have the special ability to do something. Right. We're just afraid to go on the journey of discovering exactly what that is. Mm -hmm. And then the world is set up so that you prioritize or you put more value on certain people because of their skills. And I don't think that that's very fair, you know, because there's people who can make a wonderful meal. And I'm like, man, I, I wish I could do that. Right. Mm -hmm. There's people that have beautiful design. Like, look at this place. Like I was like, I, I wouldn't even know where to start. Like, how would I put, how do you pick the plants? How do you pick the carpet? The, right. You know? So these are all beautiful skills that I think that we as, as human beings have. And then when you start the spiritual journey, it's like you tap into your gifting. And, and what happens, what I have found happening is that you take that skill that you're good at in the 3D world, mm -hmm. and then it's like somehow correlates to a gift that you can tap into to help the rest of humanity, which I think is really beautiful about life. That's how you're oriented, like to, to, to use the gift that you have to help humanity. For sure. Did, when did you have that realization or, or make that decision that that's what you were going to do with your gifts? Yeah, it's interesting. So I, I think that be, the outside world is a, is a direct reflection of the inside world. Mm -hmm. So whatever you have in life on the outside, it's, it's, it's somehow showing you what's going on on the inside. I really feel like because I trusted myself, people trusted me. Uh -huh. Like because I trusted my vision, people would gravitate towards my vision as well. Yes. And, um, and, and, and so, you know, I started to see that. And I started to see that. And, and then as I started to heal and I started to deal with my wounds, with my mother, with my father, with, you know, with women, with, with food, with, with everything. Right. Um, I started to think to myself, oh my God, like if this is all the stuff that I had to heal, like imagine humanity, mm -hmm. like there's 8 billion people out there and no one had ever even told me at that time that this was even a thing like, and so I thought, my God, like I got to find a way to help people, uh -huh. you know? And so it started with on my birthday, I would gather 20 to 30 friends and we would do a mushroom ceremony at uh -huh. the house. That's how it started. Right. And I did that for a couple of years in a row and I go, no, there's just more people. And that turned into awaken. And uh, that, that all happened. That's like fairly recently. Yeah. Yeah. Within the last like, five years, four years. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. So yeah. you've built it up very quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because the, the idea and the premise was we, there's a lot that we have to heal. Um, there's a lot of limitations that we have on our lives that we even think of as our personalities that were all shaped as a result of what happened in those first seven years of life. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, what happened with mom, what happened with dad and, um, what happened with mom and dad mine. Yeah. So if, if, if I look back, I really believe my mom had a soul contract with me. Like the way I like to think of it is we were up there and we both plan and we were like, okay, you're going to go down first. And, um, your mom is going to die. My mom's mom died 13 days prior to, uh, after her being born. Wow. So my mom never had, I like to think of it as the, the energy of, of love, mm -hmm. like maternal love in yeah. her life. She never felt it. She always felt disconnected. She always felt like something wasn't right. And, and, and even, you know, as my mom, I could always tell her, she, she was always like, I'd see moments of like, like joy and happiness, but there was always something off, you know? And she my, grew up in, in Ecuador and she grew up in Ecuador. 
And then my grandfather, when she was eight years old, showed up and said, that's not your grandmother. That's your aunt. So can you can imagine that? Oh, my God. I mean, I'm your dad and I'm taking you with me. So imagine that at eight years old. Wow. Like, yeah, yeah. So so anyhow, um, my dad went through the same thing because my my dad's dad basically disowned him. So I had a mom who didn't have the feminine yeah. energy of love in her life. And then I had a dad whose masculine was all jacked up, right? So when you hear me talk about masculine and feminine, yeah. like I just started seeing it in my own life. And again, I started thinking, oh my God, I got to talk about this stuff, right? And so both of them came together. And for me, what happened is the way that I can explain it was none of them really, they didn't, I knew they loved me, but they didn't know how to like show me love. Mm -hmm. Like saying I love you wasn't a thing, right? Really? No, 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 no. It, it, it wasn't a thing. Um, and so as a result of that, I started looking for love outside of myself, uh -huh. you know, um, I can remember being 14, wanting to get married. Wow. Yeah. That, I, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. I want to get married. I want to find the one. Where is she? Where is she? I want to have kids. I want to, it was like this, like story that just kept playing mm -hmm. in my head mm -hmm. over and over. And I want to be rich and I want to be famous. And if, if you think about it, it was all about like, I, I want to find love. Yeah. That's well, why I became an actor. Yeah. I didn't realize that yeah, yeah. at the time, but yeah. Um, yeah, I was looking, I wanted to be loved. I wanted to be seen. I wanted to be known in the way that I didn't feel I was loved and seen as a, as a child. And then I, you know, of course I got it and nothing changed. I felt the same inside. And that's when my uh, spiritual journey started so yeah. i i relate to that and, and and that's what happened to me like i i i had built the business up to such a high level and i got there and then my mom passed away she passed away of cancer lung cancer um never smoked a day in her life which i later started to correlate you know we hold grief in our lungs interesting which was yeah she was holding it since she was a little girl <clears throat> And so the motivation, the real motivation, if I'm honest, to like help heal or help the process of healing for people is because if I, if I would have known what I know now, I would have been able to help my mom, essentially, you know? Interesting. But it all works perfectly because mm -hmm. I wouldn't be who I am today if it wasn't for the fact that she, she went through that. So. Your, your parents split when you were nine? 13. Oh, 13. Okay. Yeah. And, and it sounds like you had a, a good relationship with your mother. You guys were yeah, close. Yeah. It, it was more, it became more of like, um, some weird husband, mom dynamic. Uh -huh. Like, you know, I was raising my, my brothers. I, I was you really man responsible. Of the house. I was the man of the house. True story. We grew up in New York. So you take subways or taxis or whatever. She didn't know how to drive. So we moved to California and at 13, I was the one who learned how to drive illegally. Wow. And I was driving us around because she was too nervous. Did, did that uh, impact your relationships with women? The, this dynamic that you had with your mother feeling like you had to take care of her? Yeah, because I was always trying to save everybody. Uh -huh. I was always trying to like... Like forever, because my mom was a single mom. Yeah. Forever I dated only single moms. What? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. You wanted to save them. Yeah. Because I guess if the, the belief unconsciously is that if you save them, then you can be loved. You're, you're of value. That's right. That's right. Wow. Yeah. It was like this. It was, there was so much unnecessary baggage drama energy restlessness i wasn't at peace yeah I, I i didn't know who i was i was so busy trying to chase something outside of myself yeah that i never gave myself the time nor the decency to be honest with myself about what i really wanted i, I want to ask you about your father, but did, did you have a, a rock bottom moment? I mean, you, you 
build up this huge real estate company and you start to realize that it's not making you happy there's there's an emptiness there yeah what what happened that caused you to to make this transition was there was there a moment so my mom passed away and in that moment i she she passed away in a way where it, it i was there basically holding her i, I saw her take her life in her arm she she died I, in your arm I, I wasn't her head wasn't here but i was I was, wow. yeah, and I look up and, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the the most interesting thing and the thing that hurt me the most, um, which is where sometimes I get a little passionate about the conversation of religion, you know, but I don't I don't want to do that here right now. I'm 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 going to avoid that subject. Um, was that my mom was so faithful. That like I remember the the pastor praying for her, and she literally believed that like God was gonna come heal her till the very last breath. Because like a minute before she passed away, I remember the 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 pastor was leading her in a prayer, and then she said, and he said, and everyone is said, and my mom couldn't talk. At that point, she couldn't talk, and I remember her saying, "Amen," and and then like a minute later, she's she's gone. Wow. Yeah. So to me, that that angered me. That that was my rock bottom. It, it angered you. Why exactly? It angered me because I saw her have so much faith, but what she had faith in didn't come true. Uh huh. And I saw her wither away. Um, Who are you angry at? I was angry at God. At God for a long time. For a long time. For a very long time. Yeah. Now we're homies. We're cool. We're cool. <laughs> it's all good now. Yeah. I, I love, I love that because you know, I, I bring that up a lot when I'm working with people and I ask them that question, are you angry at God? And, and no, I'm not, you know, I'm not angry at God, but if you're no, angry no, no. at life, you're angry you're, at God. If you're angry at life, yeah. you're angry at God. If yeah. you're angry at life and God, you're angry at yourself. That's right. People don't want to think about it like that. Yeah. But that's it's, it's all one. It's right. All one. So you're now you're angry at God. You're in, in some sense in opposition to life. Yeah. Right. You're resentful. Resentful. So then I start asking myself some really tough questions. Are you happy? Are you and at happy? This, you got lots of money. You're <laughs> yeah. successful. Yeah. Nice car, watch, yeah. the whole, yeah, you're, the you're whole set thing. up. Everything is good. Right. Yeah. I'm that guy that everybody comes over to his house. I feed everybody. They all mooch off me. Yeah. I don't ever go. You don't ever invite me to your house, <laughs> but you somehow every weekend show up at my house. Right. I just take care of everybody. It's, it's all good. You know, it's yeah. Good. yeah. Yeah. But, but, but deep inside, like, um, you know, if I can be honest, another reason why I talk about masculine feminine energy was because I was. Yeah, I was a little bitch in my relationship. Say more about that. What What do you mean? So I was, um, because I didn't know who I was uh -huh. and because I wasn't connected to real love within myself and because I was looking for love outside of myself, I was afraid. Yeah. Because what people don't realize is that that is the essence of the energy of fear. The energy of fear is separation mm -hmm. and we don't ever become whole until we finally realize, by the way, not because this is going to click in your mind. This has to click in your cells and the fiber of your being that everything you've been looking for, you have. I didn't know that back then though, you know? So if you've been listening to my podcast, you know, I'm a strong believer and proponent of plant medicine's ability to awaken your mind, body, and soul. And many of you have asked me where I recommend going to experience the power of these medicines. And the only place on planet Earth I would ever recommend is Reunion. It's a not-for-profit healing center with over 30 years of experience in Costa Rica, which I trust 
wholeheartedly. I'm honored to have a line with them to create the Higher Self Scholarship Fund. $100 from every booking from our community goes into this fund, and we will award the fund to someone like you every couple of months. So help me help others by using the code Danny Reunion when registering. The link to register can be found in the podcast notes, or you can learn more by going to reunionexperience.org. So I was in this position where I was in this marriage. I was, I was married for 13 years and my, my, my ex-wife, um, you know, was a little rough around the edges, you know, um, I mean, bossing you around. It, it was worse than that. It was like, you know, those kind of people that when you start a conversation with them, if you say one wrong word, uh -huh. one take it one, and th an argument starts, yeah, and there is no way out of that argument, and you're and, and you're backed up against a wall, and either you're going to just say I'm sorry, uh -huh. or it's going to get ugly. It's going to get ugly, and then yeah. you know. So for me, it was like, but for the sake of the kids, and I just okay, I'll just well, 13 years after of, of that, like eventually something you're going to explode yeah you know and by the way i do not blame her that is 100 percent my fault right because i didn't have the courage to to speak up to articulate what i was feeling to be fair i Did don't you know what you were feeling no i didn't you, had, you, you probably had no awareness I had no awareness of ever, anything but what i did know was that at the time i was in relationship with someone that didn't have the ability to listen or articulate back to me, uh -huh. accept responsibility, like basic relationship yeah. 101, essentially, yeah. you know, uh, we, we talked about this yes. the other day in our conversation. So the rock bottom for me was the following. I was the good guy. <laughs> I, I, I was the guy that yeah. you know, all of the, all of the wives would send their husbands to Mexico for the bachelor party only if they knew I was going. Wow. Because, because they knew like, as if it was my responsibility that if I was going, they would be good. Yeah. Like, I was that guy. I was the church boy, the, the you know, like on the outside, I was Mr. Perfect. Wow. But on the inside, man, I was unhappy and stuff started to happen. And sure enough, I had an affair. That's right. That, that's when I hit my rock bottom. Uh -huh. And I say that's my rock bottom because I grew up with a grandfather who was a womanizer. Mm -hmm. He had, I think it's 15 different children from like 10 different women. Wow. And some of them like all at the same time. So I, if I'm honest, despised that in him. And I told myself I would never do that. And that was my rock bottom. Mm. Did you feel shame about it? Oh, big time. Because it, it, it really confronted your idealized self-image about being this good, perfect guy. What it, what it did was like the, the, the glass house started to like crumble. It's, right. It's, you know, this, this, this perfect little image that you've been trying so hard to build so that people like you, like there was a little, there was a little chip in it uh -huh. and then forget about it. Every, everything started to fall apart. Did, how did, hmm. Yes, you had shame. Yeah. Did, when did you did you cop to it? At first, I didn't. Uh huh. No, because no no one ever like found out. Uh huh. But it, you know, energy you you just you feel things. Did you enjoy it? If I'm honest, it was the most free I had ever felt at that time in my life. Interesting. Yeah, I felt like I was living life in a cage, and I felt like I was finally like it was this battle because like on one end now I'm a sinner and I'm gonna go to hell right. And then on the other end, like, I finally listened to my instincts, like what I wanted to do. Yeah. You know? So it was this battle of like, but wait a minute, but right and wrong, but like, you know, like church and society says this, but like, I feel this, but like, well, how can this be wrong if I feel it? And, right. you know, that's really where the journey began for me. So I, 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 from that place, I'm, I'm assuming you don't really regret it. It was the greatest thing that ever happened. To me. Right. It was like, it was like the key that like unlocked the lion basically. Mm -hmm. And like, it, it, it's what, it, it drove me to my knees because I obviously caused my family hurt, which I did not want to do. And I had nowhere to go because I was mad at God because my mom had passed away. 
So I was, I was going nowhere really fast. And that's when I turned to ayahuasca. That's when I turned to plant medicine. Basically. That was the, that was the, the first step you took. That was it. What, yeah. Why ayahuasca? What, what did you hear about ayahuasca? What was the connection for you? The connection for me was that for the, for 10 years prior to me sitting with ayahuasca, I was that guy that said, if you do that, you're going to hell. <laughs> like that <laughs> you, is You'd the, heard that, about it and friends were doing it and you. Yeah, no, no, no. Because the, they say that that's bad, so it's bad. Wow. And I'm with them and you're going to hell if you do that. So, so you know, that's all ego. Yeah. And that's all, truly, it's all fear. Right? Yes. I like to think of it as like skydiving. Like until you go skydiving, shut up. <laughs> Yeah. Because you yeah. can't say anything about it, right? Yeah, it's, yeah. You know, so like Casper went skydiving, my buddy, a couple, a couple of my friends. You should go, you should go. Eh? You do what you want to do, but I I'm, I'm, I don't feel called for that. Yeah. Right? But some people, what they do is they go, no, skydiving is stupid. It's, it's the worst thing you could ever do. But you've never tried it. Yeah. That's your ego. Yeah. That's your ego trying to defend the construct that you have created in your mind that is truly based on fear, quite frankly. Fear, yeah. 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 What, what, I mean, it's a broad question. Maybe, maybe we should start what you, you did you want your first ceremony. Yeah. I, I went for a week. You, oh, you went for a week. Yeah. Again, I just go all in. <laughs> yeah. I just, I just went for a week, three ceremonies. And, wow. Yeah. And, and what, what happened? What did you learn? What, what did you take away from that? So the, the first ceremony was the scariest moment of my entire life. Uh -huh. the, the first thing that happened to me was um, my ego was so big back then that I go up to the shaman, I go up to the altar, I, I take a cup and, um, you know, I sit there for like an hour, an hour and a half. Where, where is this? Where Costa Rica. You, you're okay. And, and I'm not feeling anything. And I'm looking around and all these people are like moaning and groaning and like, you know, they're tossing and turning and i'm sitting there like this stuff is nothing like this is come on right <laughs> so then you know oh, this is my ego right uh -huh. and it's so perfect by the way the way it happens because like she was like okay you watch i'm gonna humble your ass right now so then sure enough i go up and and the shaman says uh you know who'd like a second cup and i'm the, i'm literally the first one there you know i'm i'm, I'm walking up right and uh he goes uh how much do you want i go just whatever because this stuff doesn't work like I, I didn't say i didn't i didn't say those words but i like that energy that energy is what was uh -huh. you know and he goes okay and he he give me you know and so then i sit down and i'll never forget this the moment that my ass hits the ground i think oh shit i better lay down and so i and i so i start i lay down and i put my hands right here on my heart and all of a sudden, my my arms like start flapping, <laughs> and I'm this is not me; it's my arms, right? And I'm like, what in the world is happening? And so then I close my eyes, and 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 again, David, I was that guy that I used to go to church, and I always used to pray really hard because people, you see, I hear God's voice, and I'd be like, I want to hear, like, well, I don't hear anything, but I want to hear something, yeah. you know. And it was the first time in my life that I had ever heard anything as clear as can be. She told me in Spanish, she told me, my son, I'm about to transform your life the same way that a butterfly is transformed. And I, my, my, my arms are flapping and all of a sudden, like I see the cocoon like open and I fly out like a little butterfly, basically. Wow. And that was my journey. So if you see the, our logo now, at awaken or yes, any, yes. little butterfly it's a story of transformation. Interesting. Yeah. Um, anyhow, that first ceremony, scariest moment of my life. That was scary. That, no, that was what, beautiful. Yeah, I was gonna say, what the, was the scary? The part? scary part was when I looked over to the left and I saw a skull, and I looked over to the right and I saw another skull, and essentially what happened was I was convinced that I had been led to some sort of like a cult, and I was about to die. Yeah, I've been there. You've been there? Yeah. So, so, but, but I'm smart. So I devised a plan. My plan was that if I drink enough water, I can get this stuff out of uh -huh. me 
and then I could hop on a plane and fly back home. <laughs> so that was my plan. Yeah. Well, if you've ever done Aya, you know that the more water you drink, the more that you purge. Yeah. She was she was essentially getting me to purge all of this crap outside of myself. Right. And and I literally ran. I true story. Middle of ceremony, I ran out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had to come find me. I I'm, I'm in the kitchen. Cause, cause I had heard that like limes cut it. So I was like looking for limes and I'm tripping balls by the way. And, uh, and drinking water and throwing up all at the same time. You want out of the experience. I it's want, so I, overwhelming. I it's so intense. Yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 I was out of control. Out of, well, remember the glass house, yes. the perfect little picture. It was all about me controlling the narrative essentially. Right? Yeah. And so I had to come face to face with that basically. And finally, uh, my buddy Barry ca calls me in and I'm like, that's it. It's over. I'm never going to see my kids again. And I'm like mourning basically. And I laid down and I basically just put, put like the, the blanket over my head. And I saw the newspaper clipping, like Danny Morell dies in like cult like setting in Costa Rica. And I'm like, you idiot. What did you do? What did you do? And next thing the shaman goes, that concludes the first ceremony. <laughs> and I, I literally go like this, like, <laughs> And and then like you know people start walking by and I'm like, Psst, we're not we're not gonna die. Not gonna die. <laughs> and they're like, no. Well, I guess a part of you did die though. You see, I have probably had no lie a thousand deaths since then. Right. I just didn't know. Like yeah. now I know when one is about to hit, so uh -huh. I can breathe through it and I could I could let it pass. But that was my first ever call it ego death you know whatever yeah so, so i i wasn't aware i wasn't aware um yeah and then by the third ceremony i was like give me more give me more <laughs> it was the greatest experience of my life and yeah being out of control that that's why i got so scared the first time i drank well not the first every time every time yeah was that feeling of this thing has a hold of me and I have to let go of control. I have, have to, to surrender. surrender. And it's, it's just terrifying. How, how is that for you? Because like, what, what is that balance that you have between, I mean, obviously there's a way that you, it seems like you have, or at least from the outside looking in, you have control over your life to, to a degree. And yet you have to let go of control. And it's a hard, thing to navigate. I mean, I'm always trying to ride that line. How do you, how do you think about that? Two ways. First, the greatest advice that I can give anyone is that life is a white canvas and God source universe, whatever you want to call it is trying to show you that you have the opportunity to paint on that canvas, whatever painting you want whatever partner you want, whatever money you want, whatever business you want, whatever life you want, whatever house you want, whatever impact you want, however you want to help others, there is literally nothing or no one stopping you. Mm -hmm. The problem is, is How that- How do you know that? How, well, like, because you, cause you, you know it. You know that. Well, you, Not everybody knows that. No, that's what I was about to say. The, the problem is, is that when your dad tells you, shut up, don't you talk when I'm talking. When, you're, when your mom's not around because she's busy working, when, when your parents, who are supposed to be the epitome of love, spank you and, and hit you, when you get bullied at school, when, when all of these things happen, you, you forget. When you get cheated on, when, you, when, you, when, when, when someone mistreats you, when your parents give, you know, the youngest child, the most attention, all of these things are ways in which we quickly discover like, whoa, number one, it's not safe to be me. And number two, I don't know that this is the most loving place out there. Mm. So we get disconnected from the essence of who we really are. Right. Yeah. And in many ways I, I can tell you that I know because that's what I wanted to know. When I journeyed, uh -huh. I, said, I want to know. I want to know the truth. I want to know the truth. What's God? How does life work? How, how, I, I want to know. Like, you know, when I used to think about things and it would manifest, what is that? Mm -hmm. And so every journey was about for me. 
and then life becomes a journey, just removing anything within me that would cause me to not understand how powerful I am, we are, and how beautiful this life is. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So you just decide. You 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 decide. You decide what you and, want. And do you have a practice that allows you to remember that? Because there's so many things in life that can pull you back into the Maya, back into the illusion, back into the lie, back into the fear. Yeah, you're And ready? I find for me, yeah, please. I get rid of all those things. You 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 don't the news. I don't watch the news. I don't hang out with people that that this is so why you just stay in the pocket. I just, of it I, just, I just stay in me and love. That's and so that's inspiring. It. And this is what, but, but this is why I told you, this is a true story. David was at my house this week and there's very few people, you know, we have a podcast and there's very few people that we invite back because like, even I say this, you know, with love, but even in like this, like spiritual community, people aren't what you think they are. Like it's, it's so that, so then when I told you, it's like, you know what I love about you? You know what I love about him is you don't need anything from me. Do you know how many people need something from me because they see that I have followers or because they see that I have an event and you could feel that energy from a mile away. And to me, it's like, I'm so used to it. Yeah. So, so I'm like, could you just please be you? But, but people, <laughs> yeah. but, but, but also I need it too. Yes. So I understand it. Yeah. But as a result, I stay away from any energy, any frequency that would, I, I, I just love myself. And yeah. I protect myself in that way. It, it, what is your relationship to your own needs? Because uh, I've, I struggle with my needs and, you know, Diane is here and she'll tell you that like, particularly early in the relationship, it was really hard for me to ask for what I needed. And, and, I would expect her to just know. And she would say, well, you could just ask me. Yeah. Which was, you know, annoyingly reasonable. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> because it was terrifying. I had, I had a lot of shame about, about my needs. And I guess, I don't know, how, how are you with your needs asking for what you need? Because even, you know, when my camera equipment got stolen, I, I had to reach out for, to you and yeah. ask for help. And I felt the edge of that. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to need help. Uh, I don't want to have to ask for help. And I, I don't know. Do you have any of that? Because you did, you did say something in our conversation um, that you were, you know, we were talking about women and choosing the one that you, there was some confusion that you had, you had a little crisis and you don't usually like to reach out and ask for help, but you did in this case, do, do you ask for help? Do you ask for what you need in a vulnerable way? So I think there's two parts to that. Mm -hmm. Number one, there's like the business side. And so, and so I want to speak to that because I think that, I think that this is where we as human beings tend to like collude things a little bit. And as a result, we hold ourselves back, you know? Uh -huh. So I, I think this, I, I would hope that this would be of help to people. Um, I met a man, his name was Dr. Melter. Dr. Meltzer changed my life. He changed my life because at the time I was like 50 pounds overweight. I was working six days a week. I was doing well in business, but I was miserable. And Dr. Meltzer is like 80 years old at the time. He like goes and runs in the ocean and he has his mornings off. He'll show up to the office from like 11 to two. And then he'll go like smoke weed in the afternoon or something. It was just like that kind of guy. He was so cool. Right. And I was like, well, how do you do that? And he said, chief. He said, it's very simple. He said, you could either have a work style or a lifestyle. And I'll never forget that. I'll never forget that. And he said, he said, the thing is, is that very few people actually have a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And I said, like, well, well, I want to have a lifestyle. He goes, okay, then you got you to gotta follow the golden rule. And there's two of them. And I go, okay. And so I'm like writing notes, right? And I'm writing notes. And he goes, number one, he says, you can make as much money in the world as you want. Just don't work more than 20 hours a week to make it. Now, listen, at that time, at that time in my life, I was like, 
what the hell is he talking? Like, how? Because it seems so far fetched for me. Yeah. Because I had literally built my business knocking on doors, talking to people, working extremely hard. You know, you look on social media, everybody tells you to, you got to work hard for what you want. And I'm not saying that working hard is bad. What I'm saying is, is that Dr. Meltzer helped me to see a different way. And he also taught me that all I needed to do was desire that to be my life. And it's okay if you don't, because there's a lot of people that like, they just like love being busy, right? Mm -hmm. The more and more that I got out of here and the more and more that I returned here, which I like to think of it as the masculine and the feminine, mm -hmm. right? The, 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 the feminine like likes to just like chill. It's the feminine in all of us. Just like to chill on the couch and relax and maybe watch some TV and be around family, you know? The more and more I started to be honest with myself and my needs, the more and more I started to ask myself, what do you really want? And what came, kept coming to me was, I, I, I want to live life on my terms. Mm -hmm. So then I asked, well, what does that look like, right? And, and then I just described what that looked like. And then the second thing that Dr. Meltzer told me, he said, only do what only you can do. So only I can run the calls. Only I can get on stage at Awaken. Yeah. But everything else can be delegated. And so I, when you say, do I ask for help? I don't ask for help. I demand it on the business side of things. I understand. I literally do not do anything. I don't. You don't, show I don't, up. I don't make my bed. I don't, I don't. <laughs> I don't do my laundry. I don't. Yeah. I don't check my email. I don't, I don't do anything. You don't check your email? No. Why would I? No, it's terrible. No. Um, I don't. I don't manage my calendar. I just show up and I do what only I can do. But listen, guys, that takes courage. Think about that. That takes courage. But it goes back to that challenge he gave me. It's like, which one do you want? So my brain goes lifestyle. He goes, okay. Well then. So then you get to go, that's the journey you get to go on and you get to go in and face and, and just start asking yourself these questions. Like, why do I have to do that? Mm -hmm. Right? Like, could somebody else do that for me? And at first it's scary because then it's like, well, I'm going to have to hire somebody. I'm going to have to pay somebody. I'm going to have to, right. that's your ego. That's fear. That's all the ways in which you stop yourself from having the life that you really want. Yeah. So if that is there, then the opposite is there. You just got to go on the journey to find it. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. So I just went on that journey. Yeah. And, and yeah. That, but there is, there is, it, it does, there's a trust that you have in yourself and For in sure. life that is a, that is a, a gift. And I can feel, I can feel, you know, listening to you talk, like what it, what it does to me, like it infuses me with more courage, I, you know, I and I can see why you have 800 people coming to your events. Like there's, there's something that you're radiating that's uh that feels true yeah on the personal side yeah especially like with women yes right like jen has changed my life in, in that how? part because i didn't know how to be honest with what i was feeling because in my previous relationship again i can't blame any it was me yeah i i wasn't free to express what i was feeling because w there was no space for what i was feeling Uh huh. There was no space to even be heard. And right. Then, and then if I ever did express it, there was no space for acknowledgement, acknowledgement or validation or the attempt to accept personal responsibility for your role in, in, in the way that I was feeling. Right. Because I, relationships are co-created. Yes. You know? So that took me a lot of work. And, and, and Jen gave me the safe space because she is just so just, she just says it. She has zero filter. Maybe she's cause she's British. I don't know, but that woman has zero filter. She just says whatever is on her mind and, and that, we deal with it. Right. And that opened you up to say what was on your yeah. mind. Right. Which yeah. must've been scary, scary at first. As fuck. Yeah. Yeah. Because it felt on some level wrong. Yeah. Right. It wasn't me. Uh -huh. I didn't know how to be that version of me. Well, and I can imagine if your parents split when you were 
young and then you have you're taking care of your mother you're you'd have to deny your own needs to some degree yeah. in order to take care of her and your father's not around to take no. care of your mother which is really his job did how what is your relationship like with your father so we somewhat you know I realized that in order for me to do the work that I needed to do, you, you can't help anyone else heal what you don't have the courage to heal within yourself. Uh -huh. So I, I had to deal with that. I, I remember being on stage and at that time there were like 400 people in front of me doing breath work. It was the most beautiful thing in the world. And source told me very vividly said, you know, you're never going to help them. You're never going to be able to help them be everything that they're intended to be. If you don't become everything that you're intended to be. And my ego was like, but I am, I got it figured out. And they were like, deal with your father. And I literally remember saying, nope, not, not that one. So this is, this is recently. It's two years ago. Two years ago. Yeah. Not that one. And not. he was, he, what was the relationship once they split? I mean, you, you moved out to California with your mother. Did your dad stay in New York? He stayed in New York. And, and how then, often did you see him? I, for, I didn't. You didn't? No. He On the just, phone, did you talk? Was there... No, no. I mean, I think maybe he tried for a little bit, but then he just kind of. He tried? Yeah. But w did you not, were you not open to him? Were you angry? Were you resentful? No, 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 no. It, it just, no, it just. He's the kind of guy. I was just in New York a week ago for Awaken. Uh huh. Hey, Poppy, I'm in town. You know, why don't you come on over and we'll hang out? No, no, no. I don't want to go over because of COVID. True story. This is what he says. This is the way he thinks. He uh -huh. lives in fear. Right. So he's the kind of guy that like just doesn't know how to like reach out or show interest or like not even try. And I'm okay with that. Like I had to be okay with that You're because okay. I'm no not okay with that. Well, no one showed him interest. Right. You know? That's why I'm okay with it. Yeah. He doesn't know. He doesn't know how to how to be any other thing, basically. But that must be painful. It was for a while. Yeah, it was for a while. Now I, I, now I see him for the little boy that wished that someone paid him the uh -huh. attention that he deserved. And I see that little boy and I understand why he doesn't know how to give it to right, me. Right, right. So I'm okay now. That must have been a journey, though, to get there. I mean, did you, you – anger, resentment? Purging, all of up it. during all of it. in ceremony. Yeah, until you until it. you got to this place of acceptance, you could see him yeah. just as a as a person with his own issues and and forgive him and not take personally because I can imagine the boy. I mean, we want validation from our father. We want our father to be absolutely proud of us, to see us, absolutely, and, and we want to please him. Yeah, he yeah. must be proud of you, though. He must be so incredibly proud of you. I don't know that he's even aware. He no, to be honest, he doesn't he, go check your website, check your Instagram, and that that, like shows his friend. That's my boy. I, I, I legit no. The answer is no. No, no. Wow. My my dad it's is just sad a, for me. I mean, not for you. I mean, for you, but also for him. For him, yeah, yeah, for him. Like to not know you. He's probably scared of you. On some level, you're so powerful, and he's if he's so afraid. He probably doesn't even know what to make of you. But David, I don't think he's scared of me. I think he's scared of himself. What What do you mean? I think he's scared of the version of him that could open up to like love. Right. You know? Yes. Because he he's, 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 he's like this. And I say that guys, cause if you're listening, like it's, 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 I, I believe that the process of self actualization actualization comes face to face with any unhealed energy that you have with your mother and father. Because if, if you don't go there, you will always yeah. have that, that, that craving, that want and that need outside of you. And I am telling you that's going to show up in the partner that you choose. Right. It's going to show up in your business and your financial life. And it, it, it just, it shows up. It's all the same thing. So I have peace in this because my dad's the kind of guy that will say, did you tell your brothers, you know, that I love them? And I was like, and I'll be like, no, he won't use those words. Did you tell your brothers that it wasn't my fault? That it was your mom? <laughs> that it was your mom that did that? And I go, yes, I told, are you sure you told, I go, and I, I'll say to him, well, why don't you just call them? 
And he'll go, no, 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 I, I, no, I don't. He's afraid. He's wow. afraid of connection. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> I'm going to say this. I haven't even told Jen this. His dream, his dream, um, I support him financially now, you know, mm -hmm. um, and, and his dream. How is he with that? I mean, what, Do you talk about it? Does he say thank you? It just auto withdraws. It's just, there's no. No, th because David, you see, and this is, you, you got to understand, guys. The greatest gift that a human being can give another human being. Uh -huh. You know what that is? The gift of life. It's the gift of life. Meaning, in this case. Meaning, I would not be here without him. Right, I see, you know? I see. So, like, once you're I was honoring, able to You're honoring your father no matter what. No matter what. No matter what. Because I wouldn't be here without yeah, him. Yeah, I understand. You know? for, for, forget about all the, you know, all of what I wish he could have been, whatever. I'm here. I'm here because of him. Yes. You know? So, when we were in the Dominican Republic, he told me that his dream was to just own a house with a little chicken coop. So I'm like going crazy now. Like, okay, I got to buy him a house with, with a little chicken coop mm -hmm. in the Dominican Republic. True story though. We're building a guest house right now and I'm putting a chicken coop back there. <laughs> and like two weeks oh. ago, two weeks ago, he calls me, he's having a health issue. And I got this download the other night and I'm like, shit, he's going to end up living with me. Wow. Because it's just going to be the way that we... Uh, I just saw the, I just saw, you it. saw it. I saw it. Yeah. So I'm having to deal with that. Cause that's going to bring me face to face with like caring for. That's deep. I know, bro. I know. I know. Wow. I know. Uh, well, I'm now I have to tell Jen. So don't air this. I, I have, <laughs> I have to tell well, her. I'm, I'm, I don't know. makes me happy for both of you. Yeah. Yeah. Like there's something will happen something yeah that's beautiful yeah is that enough what i don't know should we ask oh i was just getting started oh we're just getting started <laughs> there's more <laughs> whatever you want what time is it i don't know oh we got lots of time okay yeah. It's impossible for you to have a successful relationship with another human being or a partner if you don't have a successful relationship with yourself. And what we as human beings don't realize is that we are deeply disconnected. We're disconnected from Mother Earth. We're disconnected from peace. We're disconnected from love. What we do at Awaken is we curate different exercises to help you reconnect first to yourself and then the beautiful process of reconnecting to everybody begins. And that's why Awaken is so powerful. You'll do more in three days at Awaken than you would do 30 years anywhere else. I was so stuck and now I feel peace. Awaken has been the best thing we have done for our marriage. Coming here, I realized that the answers were inside of me all the time. Head on over to dannymorell.com backslash awaken now to get your tickets today. What do you, do you, I mean, so here's, here's how I experience you. Okay. Like you have a, and I don't mean this in a, uh, uh, I don't know, a negative way. But it's just, okay if you do. What, no, I don't. Like it's you have you you have an answer for everything, yeah. and they're very convincing answers. Like yeah. you're, they're very persuasive. Like I believe you. Yeah. But I'm also like, what is there? Is there are you do you, you can't have it all figured out. No. What don't you have figured out? What do you struggle with? What's what's hard for you? Are you lonely? I don't have an answer for that. Are you, do you, do you? Okay. You know what's hard for me? Yeah. Relationship with men. It's hard for me. That's why I like you. You're, you're easy. You're safe. You don't need anything from me. Yeah. That's why I like Samson. Samson does his thing. He's safe. He's cool. That's why I like Albert. Albert's on another level. These are right. like, you know, true story. 
Yeah. I'm sitting on the podcast and Casper like like hands me an object. I won't say the object. And I'm like, oh cool. What is this? This guy's coming on the show and he does this thing. Oh, cool. Okay, whatever. Um and um anyhow, I, I hit it off with the guy. We became buddies. Next thing you know, he has me do a, like a like a social media post with the thing, with the object. And unbeknownst to me, he was introduced to us from this guy that was on the show. Uh huh. It's like one of the local Austin spiritual people. Yeah. And the guy hits me up, and he's like, you know, you really need to thank people when they introduce you, or if not, and if you don't, there's some universal karmic blah, blah, that you open up the portals to fucking hell or whatever. <laughs> and I'm like, what? Literally, like, wow. What? And um, I didn't respond, and I didn't respond because I knew what he wanted. He wanted my energy. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I get that. Yeah. Um. And then I responded, you know, <laughs> and I shouldn't have. And I learned the lesson. How did you respond? I was like, listen, this seems like a you with you thing because uh -huh. I was unaware of any of this. Mm -hmm. So if you want to like refer people to us, thank you. But what was the purpose of you referring them? Did you need some sort of thank you? Did you need some sort of validation? Because I'm not here to give you that. Yeah. Like, that's not my role. That's your role. And then he... Uh, Assalamu alaikum. But that that's that's my experience with a lot of men, to be honest with you. So and I'll take ownership and co-creating it. Sure. And if you want to like dig deep, whatever, let's do it. But I'm just being honest. Well, I mean, you don't you don't trust men. Yeah. Why would you? I trust you. Do you? I trust you. You do. I do. Why? 100%. Why do you trust me? Because there's no number one, because I know you've done the work. I know you've dealt with your shit. Mm -hmm. And I find that that is very rare to find amongst human beings nowadays. Mm -hmm. Like people like to do surface level, mm -hmm. right? And, 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 like, and like play the part. But when you say that I have an answer for everything, it's because I, I, I faced, I, yeah. I, went, I went in, 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 in. Like, and then more in. And, and when you find, when you go there, what you find is peace. Mm -hmm. And the opposite of peace is like need. Mm -hmm. So when I feel need from people, mm -hmm. I'm like, ah. So, okay. So that would, that would indicate to me like if you are put off by somebody's need, that would tell me that there's some part of your need that you repress, which, which is my instinct. Okay. With you. Like if I was to really, and it would make sense. You had to repress your need in order to survive. Yeah. Literally to take care of your family. Yeah. Like you're, you're 13. Yeah. Like you don't want to be taking care of your mother. Yeah. You want to be free. You want to be doing the things that you want to do. So some, some aspect of your freedom of your need to be free or do what you want, be who you are, not have to, I mean, taking care of your mother at 13. I know this cause I, I went through this. Yeah. It, it created a, a burden on me. And then all women represented burden because I didn't know how to have my need with women. So the, my whole orientation was I have to take care of them. I have to repress my own need, which would, I'm not saying this is what happened with you, but then I would feel this resentment. And then it was, it wasn't until Diana where she was just like, why don't you just fucking ask me? Right. That's right. And where I, I had to confront that, but because in the place where your dad wasn't around also, like he's supposed to be taking care of that shit. He's supposed to be taking care of your mother. I know. Yeah. But he didn't. He didn't. Yeah. But it's it's like some sadness. Like, do you let people see your sadness? Do you do you let because I can also imagine Danny like 
because you're such a, a high profile guy and you're like, I don't want to say that you're performing all the time because you're not like, I don't feel you as performative, Sure, but you're also like, you are on stage a lot. You are, you know, on Instagram, you're making videos, you're doing the thing and you can get it. And I know that as an actor, like you get into these zones and then sometimes like, you know, I'd be three, four, five, six months in character. And then I come out of the character. I was like, I, whoa, I was somewhere. Yeah. And there was some other part of me that I wasn't paying attention to. I mean, I would say. What would Jen say? I wish she was here. <laughs> what's her, I don't want to say her complaint, but what's like, is she have a consistent reflection to you? I think the consistent one with her is there's times that I check out uh -huh. and I'm, and I can feel it now and I'm not in my heart. Where do you go? In my head. What are you thinking about? I don't know that I'm thinking. I just want to retreat. Uh huh. I just want to be alone. So there's something in the present that you don't want to deal with. Or, or that I don't know how to communicate or articulate. Right. Yeah. 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 If I'm honest, I feel like where I'm most vulnerable is probably like in like one to many settings, but like one to one settings, that's rough. It's rougher for to, me. to like, so for you and I to be vulnerable, you to be vulnerable with me. In I, don't a, know, in a, I don't know with you. I, I just, you, I don't know. I feel comfortable. I don't know. How you to, do. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But it's so, but it is hard in general. You can be vulnerable in front of, of a crowd. Cause I, cause I, I'm just always thinking, what do they want from me? What do they want? For, yeah. Yeah. So okay. that's, I guess that, cause I asked intuitively, like, are you lonely? And I know in some way you're not lonely, but in the place where you're looking out at the world, you're looking, you don't trust men because it's, some, you know, your father on some level, some level. Sure. And, you know, you're looking at and what do people want from me? That just feels like a, like a lonely place. It can be. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I have to like, it was, it was interesting because like last night we went to, um, uh, our friend Brit's birthday party and I have to talk. I have to literally like, okay, be nice to people. Come on. Like, like hang out, get to know people, you know, it's okay. Yeah. Do you always have to be nice? Are you always nice? What happens if you're not nice? I didn't mean it in that way. I meant like, like conversate. I, under, I understand, yeah, conversate. but I'm just taking it there. Okay. So ask again. Yeah. Like, are, do you have to be nice? Like, is there an image in your mind that like you always have to be nice? You have to be good. I think that very much was a part of it in the past. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Cause I can be a real asshole. Sometimes. You can. Yeah. What's, what's that look like? When, when are you an asshole? How does that express itself? How does it feel to hear him say like he can be an asshole sometimes? You love it. Feels good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like I could be an asshole to Casper. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But we're like, we're friends. Yeah. 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 So there's a shadow. Yeah. He's another one that I trust. Yeah. I trust Randy. I trust. Yeah. There's just good humans, you know, and, and, and it was two weeks ago. I had, um, Aaron Apke on the podcast. Mm -hmm. And we really connected. We really connected. He's great. He's wonderful. And I, I invited him, my buddy Shaddy. Uh, just, I feel like when people are safe and they, they can just be them and I can just be me, it's like, I like to take care of people. So like I brought them over to the house. I, I had a wonderful dinner for them and it feels nice. It's just. But is that default? Like, is that just like the place you go? Like, like I take care of people. 
Is that a pattern? It, it, it could be. Uh huh. Yeah, it could like, be. I think it is part of yeah, your yeah, essence. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. It's a. It's a mask. Yeah. But I, is there a, a way that that's more comfortable than getting yeah, getting the? Oh, really, that is real one or million intimate. percent. One million. Percent. Yeah. It's more comfortable for me to take care of people than it is for me to allow them to take care of me. Let me take care of you. Just feel that. Just feel that. Don't, don't, don't try to make sense of it. Let I me feel take... kind of weird. Yeah. <laughs> but just, just feel that. Let me, let me, let me just take care of you. You don't yeah. have to do anything. I, I got it. You don't have to do anything. It feels very awkward, guys. I'm, just not, <laughs> not gonna... I'm getting red here. <laughs> do you know what I mean though? How does that, uh, are you able to let that in? Are you able to receive that? It's like, I mean, it is uncomfortable. I think that's my greatest struggle. Mm. Yeah. Letting people like what? How would you, what, what is your greatest struggle? How would you say it? Like letting people in, uh -huh. letting people take care of me. If you let people in, if you let people take care of you, Are what? Are you really going to do this right now? Yeah. What's the, <laughs> what's the, well, I'm, let me, like, how is this for the audience? Like, how, like, are you in, it feels good, right? Good. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I'm going to turn around now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they're with you. All right. They're Let's with do it. you. Let's do it. If, <clears throat> what do we say? If you let people in. I let people in. And, by the way, I'm exactly the same way. I know, I know this. I have this down. Yeah. Um, if you let people in, right? If you let others take care of you, you must have an image that something I don't know, unpleasant is going to happen or there's something scary, like a young, from a young place. Obviously it's not rational, but. I think it's, I think it's, if I let people take care of me, they could either be gone or let me down. Like who, who did that? Who, who was gone and let you down? My mom and dad. Your mom and dad. Yeah. And yeah. Like I just feel that you had to make a decision at some point. Like I'm on my own. I got to take care of myself. Not only do I have to take care of myself, I have to take care of my family. I'm not really going to get the support. And, and it, it's, it's a decision not like, I mean, the ego take ego takes hold and says like, I'm look at me, I'm 13. I'm driving my mom around. Like I'm amazing. But on a deeper level, a like, lot of needs you're just doing it to survive. Yeah. You ha literally have to do this to survive. Yeah. And so if you don't do it, it's like something bad is going to happen. Yeah. 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 Does Jen take care of you? Do you let, do you let oh, her? She's wonderful. You let her though. Yeah, I let her. Why? How would you feel safe with her? Because she loves me for me. Uh huh. She's yeah. she's yeah. I can she's, see that. Yeah, she's everything. Yeah, but a but a man might be more of an edge. You know, the thing is, is that even for Jen, no, I don't think I don't think a man is more of an edge. I just think I haven't had the opportunity to heal that part of me with a man yet. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like when you're in relationship, you come face to face yeah. with that. And it's either, you, you know, you know, in hindsight, you know, what happened guys was I found myself, Jen would tell me a lot of things that my ex-wife would tell me. Uh huh. So then I, I, I would catch myself thinking, okay, either, 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 either they're crazy or you're cr like something, something, <laughs> something's not right. If yeah. you're hearing the same thing. Yeah. So wake up. Cause, cause there's gotta be some truth to what she's saying about the way that she's feeling, you know, which is, which was what do you remember? I mean, it was, it's just been so much. Mm. Yeah. Like the beautiful thing about our relationship is both of us. Like we just, I think unknowingly, it's not something we said. We were just committed to like removing all the barriers. Is there a shadow inside you that you have to keep an eye on? Like, I mean, you said you could be an asshole, but is there, is there anything else in there that like, like a little snake or a dragon that comes up once in a while that you have to be aware of? 
What is your shadow? Keep asking because I, I don't well, know. Well, okay. Um, you're a conqueror. Okay. Right? Fair. Fair. So yeah. just, yeah, let's just hang out there for a minute. Okay. Because you're, you are actually like, if, you know, you're like a badass motherfucker. Okay. You get shit done. Well, yeah, it's going to get you're, done. You get shit done. Yeah. You're super successful. You're yeah. good looking. You're articulate. You're intelligent. You're rich. You're that guy. And you make it happen like that. Yeah. Like that's, that's a thing. That's there's, a thing. There's no way that it's not not going to happen. Yeah, there's no way it's not going to happen. And you, you're hungry for it. It's like you were born for it. And maybe there's some unconscious motivations from your childhood that are driving it. And fair enough, right? Yeah. I, I don't. That's unavoidable. But there's also something at your essence that's a conqueror. Well, like I'm going to get what I fucking want. Yeah. And you. It, can you feel that there's, and there's a goodness in that. Sure. I'm not, I don't, sure, sure, I love, sure, sure, we, sure. world's got to have conquerors, yeah. right? Um, but is there a shadow? Is there a, like, I don't know, something else? Like, I'm going to win. I you think know what I mean? that was there for a long time. Mm-hmm. You guys know what I'm talking about? You feel that? How does it, how does his conqueror, like, how does it feel? Inspiring. Is it, do you feel safe with it? It's balanced by the need for safety. Right. It's so interesting you brought that up. Um, one of my, one of my greatest moments of release was Jen and I had, we were, we were laying in bed and we were just like talking or we we're having a moment and all of a sudden, like she holds me. Mm hmm. And I saw in that moment essentially what my mom was searching for her whole life was to just be held. Mm -hmm. Because I saw that her pain came from not having her mom mm -hmm. there to hold her. But you didn't you didn't have your mother either, exactly. Not, not the way you not want the it. Way, yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. So I was, so I, I'm bringing this up because when you said that, it just made me re re remember, I, I literally cried my eyeballs out in that moment. Wow. Because I realized number one, it was like, that was like the feminine wound in me. Yeah. It was like my grandmother carried like to my mom, yes. my mom to me. And in that moment, I finally was able to like release it. Uh huh. And I, and I finally let Jen in and I let her hold me. And I was probably like a little baby later, like, <laughs> like just crying my eyeballs out really. Wow. You know? But it was a big moment of, yeah. Something. Yeah. And, and, and it truly was a moment of like, oh my God, that's what I always wanted. To I be just, held. I just wanted to be held. To be held. Yeah. 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 And what do you remember? Like the tears were. Like, like it was a grief, like, like a relief, purging. A purging. Yeah, it was like a like a like a release. Right. Yeah. Right. Are there are there aspects of you that you are um afraid to show the world or or maybe that you even are afraid to acknowledge in yourself? I think that's the one thing that like the world appreciates is, is you know, I, I I feel like I'm a pretty open book. Uh -huh. And I, and I and I, as a matter of fact, I think that's the magic of Awaken is that they feel free to be vulnerable because, because I'm vulnerable. You, yeah, yeah. 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 I, I work really hard to be vulnerable because in my eyes, anything outside of 
you being vulnerable is somehow connected to fear. You know, you're, mm-hmm. you're afraid to to be seen or or to, mm-hmm. to show yourself. Mm-hmm. And and I work hard to confront that by just laying it all on the line. Basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Know, so yeah, yeah. Well, I yeah. I mean, I think you're being really courageous. Now, I mean, you're just even showing up because you you kind of know where I'm going to try to take it. <laughs> And and just so yeah, anyone I got hot who there for a second, I'm not gonna lie. What's that? I got hot for a second. You got hot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you mean? Like what? Like what? What's hot? No, no. When you brought up, what did he bring up? I don't know. You, you... <laughs> yeah, letting people in. I was like, Ugh. oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. When yeah. I said, yeah, let me, yeah. yeah. You know, another one of my. I don't know if it's a shadow, but I know it's a thing. Uh huh. I don't want to let people down. Yeah. It's funny. I was thinking about that yeah. on, the, on the way over. Yeah. What's going to happen if you let people down? They won't like me. You won't be loved. I won't be loved. So if you let people down, you won't be loved. Yeah. That's a, that's another heavy burden that you have to carry. Yeah, no. So I can imagine why you would check out once in a while because you carry this heavy burden and every once in a while you just got to, you got to disassociate. You got to like go somewhere to like give yourself some relief. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I carry you can let this me burden. down. <laughs> <laughs> but just, okay. just no, no, hold on, stay. Like, just feel. Yeah. Like if we're friends, right? And I want you to know that if you let me down, it's okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Like it's okay. Like I think you, if we're really friends, at some point you would let me down. Sure. Like, and I would let you. Like it's that's just relationship. It's just relationship. Yeah. Yeah. And it's interesting you're bringing this up right now uh-huh. because that's one of my greatest struggles in relationship uh-huh. is like, once you let me down, like I let you out. It's okay. So, so that's, that's the pressure on me. If I'm in relationship with yeah. you, it's like, I can't let I'm just being you honest. Down. Right. I'm just being completely yeah, no, honest. Great. If completely I honest. let you down, I'm out. Yeah. Wow. Anybody else like that? So I don't feel alone. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because why? Probably just safer that way. You're safer that way. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's deep shit. Yeah. I will just I'm I'm gonna keep just saying things. I this is how I, I, I do it often because it's like talking around it sometimes it keeps it in, in the head. But if I just say things and to see how it feels for you. And then you just can notice. But if I just say, like, I want to know you more, just notice how that feels. Like, <laughs> I just got like, I got awkward. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Like, I want to know you more. Yeah. Like, I want to know more about you or, or like, well, I don't know. I was going to say, yeah, I want to be, I want to, I want to, I, it's funny. There's things I want to say, but I can feel where, like, if I say, like, I want to get closer to you, but I don't want anything from you. Like, I don't want to put any pressure. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. so I can feel where I hold back in relationship to you Shit, because, me. well, maybe, I mean, if, yeah. you know, that's what I learned in the place where I'm not trusting um, it creates a, a kind of a vibration where mm. people will kind of ultimately like betray me yeah. or yeah. move away from me. Yeah. But I understand why, I mean, I, I relate to you here and I, I think a lot of people here relate in their own way, like considering what happened to you. Cause it's like, I know there's a place where you've like, you have worked really hard to get through it and, and, and I can still, you know, there's, there's more there. It's, it's, it's never, I guess is what I came to through all the work that I did. Cause I went through this training and it was one thing after another, after another. And I, you know, I was 42 years old. I've been doing it for 10 years and I'm like, I'm still fucking crazy. I'm I went like, when does this end? And I, I realized like, oh no, it's the, it's just the acceptance that I'm, I'm imperfect. Like that I'm going to, I have these wounds and 
they're going to come up and that I have to, you know, just sort of keep an eye on them and be humble to it and not take myself out because I'm not perfect all the time. This, this is very humbling. Very, humbling for you. Yeah. Why? It, it just, fe it, but it feels, it feels good. It uh -huh. feels scary. It feels, hum there's just a lot. Yeah. There's a lot like I'm becoming aware of a part of me that has been a story that I have been like creating and manifesting that was a blind spot. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah. <laughs> how, how does that feel to the audience? Yeah. When he says that, so beautiful, it's so real. So human. I think we're all going to cuddle afterwards or something. <laughs> I'm going to let you guys in. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. You're amazing. Thank you. Like that, like that, that, what you just did and your willingness, that's. Well, it's, it's, it's the truth. Yeah. It's the truth. It's, it's interesting because when you first started. I was like, my ego was like, there's nothing there. There's nothing. Uh -huh. And then I just, there's nothing. There's nothing. Oh shit. There's something <laughs> there. And then like, you can't, if, if there's any like benefit of this journey, like, yeah. is that, you, you know, once you're there, there's no, yeah. you, could, you gotta, you gotta go find it. Yes. And I just, I just realized it. And, and I, and I gotta be honest with you. There's like. I'm starting to see, like, I, I can name names of, like, guys yeah. that, like, probably, they let me down. And I right. just, yeah. And they'll constantly be trying to, like, come back in my life. And I'm like, nope. Yeah. You let me down. Right. And now you're out. Now you're out. Yeah. Yeah. But in truth, I created it from the story and the energy within me. Yeah. That's how it works. That's how it works. That's how it works. I know, I know that's how it works. So yeah. Yeah. It's a, well, you say this is how we started this, this conversation. Is, this is, yeah. You said everything is a mirror, like yeah. your exterior world is a, is just that's a reflection it. of your interior world. So if, if you're getting let down or you have this story that you're, you're getting let down on some level, that's a mirror for what's going on inside you or something that's unresolved inside you. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Now what? Fuck. I have to have friends and stuff. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, you'll, yeah, you'll have to let go of some control, Yeah. but your dad's coming. Yeah. But yeah. Chicken coop. You yeah. built, you built, you're literally building a guest house for your father. I'm, well, I'm building a guest house. The download was he's well, somehow going to eventually end up. There. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's, it, it is something, it is kind of magical. Um, I mean, I felt that when we met the first time and, and we had that conversation, you were immediately like, um, you know, come out to my event and you know there was a there was a connection and yeah yeah and and it's why and then when i asked you to do this you were like a thousand percent i'm yeah. gonna and i know you're a busy guy i didn't know you were gonna say yes and i guess that's like what i felt is like your higher self was saying yes to something yeah like, it, you know what I mean? That's how I was like, that's why I, I was willing to ask you these questions because I felt like you had given me permission. Sure. Does sure. that make sense? Yeah, for sure. It's on some level. For sure. And I appreciate it. I appreciate you. Because I prefer sitting here than sitting there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, this is where I, I, this is like, you know, I get this thing control. Comfy zone. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 It's. Yeah. This is wild, guys, because um, it's like a part of me just died, you know? Because once you become aware of it, like, what are you going to do? Are you going to crawl back in the hole? Or you're going to start to, like, work on it? You're going to start to, like, address it, you know? I feel really protective of you. Yeah? Right now. Yeah, because, you, cause you, you know just of what you said and the vulnerability. Yeah, and, it feels vulnerable. Yeah, it feels really vulnerable. But I'm good with, I'm good with, I'm, I, I'm okay with that. Well, 
yeah, I know. And, and I just, I feel really protective of you. And like, I know you don't need taken care of, but. You could take care of me. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, but this, I'm, this, that I'm, I'm here. Yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you. Anytime. Thank you. And, and also. You don't need anything. Yeah, no pressure. Like, it's <laughs> like, I don't, you know, you don't have to no, do anything. That. Like, no that. demand. I get that. Yeah. It's just, it's just that. Yeah. Um, I appreciate you, man. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad to know you. Glad to know you. Yeah. And uh, is there anything else um, you need in this moment? Like, just, just to, I guess, for, to bring it into closure or just to complete anything? Is there anything else you need to say or? It's interesting because I, I try to, I, I find myself trying to make it a teaching moment. Uh huh. And I'm like, shut up and just like, <laughs> like do this for you. Like allow this yeah. for you for a moment. So yeah. that I needed to say that, that I'm, I'm just like really letting this sit and sink in right now. Cause it was, it was a blind spot for sure. For sure. Yeah. Thank you, Danny. Thank you. <laughs>